Hey yo, what's up? You know what it is? The one and the only, the triple, the G O D, live on Team G R F TV. I had to welcome you guys back to another installment of Triple the Guy Speaks on and Yo. Coming right up, built episode twenty-seven, the counterattack hero. This right here is what I have been waiting this whole series for. This moment, the moment when. The breakthrough comes when that wall is shattered and there is nothing, and I mean nothing, but the infinite potential beyond the wall that has just been destroyed. But before we get to that wall, though, we've got something else we got to handle. Juggernaut bitch took a hell. And it wasn't that Juggernaut bitch took a hell because... The plot needed him to take in there, which it actually did, you know what I'm saying, just to make sure that my English is correct, is why he took a nail. In war, you have to be able to do whatever it takes. I'm not sitting up here saying my boy Banjo Ryuga hasn't been doing what it takes as a friend to Sento. His responsibility as a common writer and everything that goes with that. But again, like I said, the plot needed him to give it away so that we get to what our episode is. But even given that, it shows that even in war, that Bonjo got a heart. And as a hero, that's not something you ever want to lose. Because losing your heart means losing your way, and losing your way leads to a whole bunch of things no one wants to deal with. Is that in this fight, we got a lot of things. One of the most important things I feel that we got, you know what I'm saying, other than, you know, building up that, yo, Bonjo's not a complete heartless psycho who just wants to run around punching things, shaking a dragon bottle. Is there was a nice little flashback between him and me tying the stand about why why do you do what it is you do me time like yo i am me time the stand i fight for all the stands of me time but but seriously though my friends lost their lives in this war they family sitting up here taking nails because of this war and all i want to do is fight back to give back what was taken from them and that's fair, very fair, given that everything he's gone through and everything he's had to lose to get to the face turn that we appreciate as me time the sign. Fair enough. Of course, you got you got the juggernaut, bitch. You know what I'm saying? And his whole thing is wrapped up in his friendship with Sento and Masora and all that they've been through together as a family. Because we know the story. At first for Bonjo, this was nothing. This was nothing but a walk of revenge because of what he lost. And that pain of losing his gal drove his everything. The pain of being set up for something and being blamed for something you didn't do. That'll drive you. But understanding that even though people are gone... What they want for you never leaves. And that was the start of Bonjo's walk towards something a lot more positive. This being fueled with his friendship with his best friend of there's a lot that Sento goes through. As a man who was identified as one man who was truly somebody else and walking around with all the sins of his past. And we'll get more into that a little bit later. The thing is, what's important here is that every now and then, even though you know the answer, sometimes it's good for the sake of the story to be reminded of exactly why someone does a thing. And that flashback was great for why somebody done the thing. Even though Banjo the Yuga took that L because Hell Bros was like, man, they got my brother hemmed up. And then just took the L on purpose. And again, for the umpteenth time, let me just repeatedly explain. For the sake of plot, the L had to be taken. For the sake 
of continuing to humanize Banjo Ryuga as a character, even though that's not something at this juncture you really need to do. Yo, kids got a heart. And as this war gets deeper and deeper and deeper into the trenches, you gonna need that kind of light shining through. Because it's going to be that which is going to bring his friends back from the brink. His his never his never say die attitude, his never stopping for wanting to end the war and wanting to end the pain and suffering of others. And that's fair. So with all that explanation out the way, our current score is one to one. And here we are, right now, the final bout. Kamen Rider Bid versus Kamen Rider Rogue. Henshin up, transform, and let's kind of fight, but not fight in the fisticuffs way. Because a lot of what led up to the... What's the word I'm looking for here? The climax of our episode was a lot of the battle of the mind. You got you got Dark Alucard over here reminding Sento of who you used to be. The ghost you've been chasing ever since you understood, realized, found out the truth, and accepted the truth of... Who it was I used to be. This is where I step in. And we are going to have like a real moment right now. Just a, just a real moment. Because it's been a while since we've had one of these real moments. And a show has presented me with the opportunity to have a real moment with you guys. You want to know something about me? My goal every day is to be a different man. And a better man than I was yesterday. Even with the sins and the shortcomings of what was yesterday before. And the yesterday before that. And the yesterday before that. And so on and so on. To try to drive myself to be better than I was. To look in the mirror and know that I made somewhat of a step to be better than I was yesterday. It is in this that... Ever since Sento has been fighting this, that I've admired his his strength to keep going. Because you have a lot of people that would take the truth that he's had to absorb, the sins of his past, and everything that led up to him being built and him continue to be built, and everything that goes with being a hero. You have a lot of people who would have cracked under that pressure. And I mean completely and utterly flatlined under it. Sento has done everything that he can to be a hero, spite everything. It is during this fight with him and Gintoku where, like I said, the wall for infinite potential has been shattered. Because in this, yeah, he becomes rabbit, rabbit. Yeah, we've got a whole lot of more fight to go. But it was how we got there. You have Sento and do honesty sitting up here fighting Gintoku. And ever since he became rogue, it's been sitting up here having to continually confront your confront your quote unquote sins of your past for someone constantly reminding you of who you were and who you are because of who it was that I know you to allegedly be and that is what Sento has been doing his whole time and that's the true reason why that every time he activated the hazard trigger that it never worked because you're sitting here trying to A Fight against something you're not anymore. And continuing to let the baggage of who you were then affect who you are now. Once you realize the truth of shit happens. But it's not supposed to define you. And it's through all of this 
in the moments of, and especially I appreciate the part where against Hoku sits up here straight up says, yo, Sparkler can't whoop me, bruh. You want to know why I can't whoop me? Because this ain't you. Everything you've done up until this point has all been on the back of Takami Kasaragi. Everything. Every single thing you've done, every single thing you've built, it ain't been you. It's been him. So you sit up here and say that it ain't this, that it ain't that, that it's all these things. But yet here you are using these tools. You claim it ain't for war. You claim it ain't for this. You claim it ain't for that. But your actions say different. The world that has been built upon your sins says a whole lot different. It is in this that Santo has to confront the truth within himself. You're right. 110% correct. You're right. This ain't me. But this bad boy, 101% me. And in that, the full, full bottles in the building. Rabbit! Rabbit! Max Hazard on. And it's in, the, and it's in this moment that wall for infinite potential has been broken down. This is the first time in a long time where a power-up has meant something. Not saying that what and other riders have had to go through to get these power ups don't mean anything. Because I haven't felt like this emotional connection into what's going on in a rider show in a very long time. Because a lot of times when riders get to this point of, yo, it's time for a form change, it's a form change because of. Is that. I remember, I appreciate, I, I said up here and say this. I appreciated Maximum Mighty X. Because Maximum Mighty X, that was a group effort. That was the whole fam. That was the whole fam. A little bit from you, a little bit from me, and together we create this Gundam. Law. This though. Because we all have been this emotional thing with Sento Kiryu as he's grown up, as he understands that, yo, this is who I was way before there was a me. This is me going forward. And that's what Rabbit Rabbit and ultimately Tank Tank represent. The wall of infinite potential. Because you've cast away the sins of yesterday. And there's nothing but today to move forward to. You gotta love that. I know that this review wasn't my usual clown on them fair. But I really wanted this review to really represent how I felt and how I feel about this show. This show, I'm invested in it a lot more emotionally than I have been in past rider seasons. And I don't know whether that's because I feel that as a character that Sento Kiryu is a kindred spirit. Because I've gone through a lot of that identity crisis of who it is that you are versus who it is you want to be and what you'll do to reach out to who you want to be because you want to be a better you. And that's been Sento's curious fight this whole series so far is sometimes we are in fights we have no idea we're even a part of. That a lot of times, we as people, we do things. And it's not even a thing of considering 
the consequences and how it affects others because a lot of times you do things for the sake of survival. And I'll be the first one to admit that, yeah, I've done things in this life that I am not 101% proud of. But they are me, but they don't define who I am. And I think really that's why I find a kindred spirit in Sento because of who of who Takari Kasumagi was as a man. They labeled him as a as a devil scientist. But we see through flashbacks of that the sacrifices that I'm willing to make that yo, he said in the episode, I'm willing to sell my own soul and do whatever it takes for a better tomorrow. In the way and in the eyes in which I see and perceive it. I'm the same way. I am 101% the same way. That a lot of times the sacrifice is indeed worth the price. And I'm just being honest. You're on a channel where I've had to make those sacrifices in order to bring you a product that yeah everybody who watched this probably watched that video i put up about what's going on with me i lost a little bit of time but i'm in the mix like i know that yeah i'm episodes behind and so what i watched this show i love this show i enjoy this show and i enjoy getting on the microphone to review it. so i do it because that's the sacrifice you make Because one of the sacrifices that I've had to make is I have to watch the show differently than I would if I was just watching it to enjoy it. But I watch it because I know I have to review it. So I have to sit a little bit of my actual enjoyment to the side so that I can pay attention a little bit more. So that I can see it from different ways while I'm watching it. Because not only am I wanting to enjoy the show. But I need to take the show and be able to dichotomize the show into something that turns into one of these videos. So, hey, it is what it is. I will say this again. I 101% appreciate the growth that Sento has gone through to get to Rabbit Rabbit. And I've been on this journey with him and I've enjoyed myself, and I know I will. I know we got Tank Tank. I don't know how much Tank Tank is going to be different than Rabbit Rabbit because the emotional breakthrough has happened. We can get back to normal clowning again next episode because, again, like I said, this episode right here was a little bit emotional for me because of how the episode resonated. And every now and then, you get that. That you watch a piece of media and it just resonates with you in a way that you appreciate. And I'm glad and appreciate and I'm thankful and I'm blessed to have the opportunity to say this was an episode that resonated with me because the character in this show resonates with me as a person. And that's what you want. That's what I need. That's why I love watching this show. Because I enjoy watching the growth of these characters that I love and appreciate. And that I know you guys do too. I want to see how this fight is going in. Because it ends one of two ways. Either Tank Tank is going to bring down that boy Gentoku Himorita, former leader of the Gray Squad, aka Common Rider Roog, aka Dark Black Alucard. Or Sento is going to be triumphant, but if Sento's triumphant and Sato loses the war, then what's next for the show? Questions. Questions, questions, questions. Thank you, Kamen Rider Bill, for being an amazing show. I appreciate Sento Kiryu, Yuga Banjo, and even Swimming Pools for being great characters. 
You know what I'm saying? That yeah. Even though that I mentioned like how much emotional this episode was, if you thought I forgot, that boy look, look, and I mean look, Japanese big worm sitting up here, and you got Sawa stealing the the superpowers and all that. Japanese big worm, this dude's crazy. He's sitting up here eating fish. Like, don't let me down, son. Like Chalky Studebaker, daddy all dug. <laughs> Oh, you really thought I didn't was going to have some jokes, you crazy as hell. Yo, this episode was off the chain. Again, like I said earlier, man, I appreciate, man, Bond over you having a damn heart. Even though he was lied to and even though the plot called for him taking a nail, he took a nail but continued to humanize the character. What's going to be of the end of this fight? I won't have to wait soon to find out because that's the good thing about being able to marathon some episodes. You ain't got to wait a week. You ain't got to wait for the sub. You can watch it right now. And I probably will a little bit later because I still got to watch some cops and robbers. But, but for now, coming right up bit, episode 27, The Counter-Attack Hero. Review complete. And indeed it is. Y'all gonna scat skittles kebabble. When we come back from these commercial messages, we got some cops and robbers for you. God love some cops and robbers. Remember though, triple the DLD, common rate of build, <laughs> slavery trigger, max slavery all, <laughs> ultimate best match. Are you ready? Of course, even though this is a commercial break, you were never ready. <laughs> I see you guys after these commercial messages. <laughs> Get break! <laughs>